Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a Christmas cushion using a tote bag and IOD's Noel paint inlay. We're also going to use the letterpress stamp as well. I picked up this cotton tote bag at a craft store and my first job is to try and get some of those wrinkles out. They were very stubborn. I'm using my little iron here and I'm just going to do the best I can. I'm also ironing in the inside as well. We are going to be working with paint so I am putting some cardboard between the two layers so that they don't stick together. I'm then coming in with Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat. I'm going to coat the entire tote bag because we're working over the entire piece and I want to make sure that the design looks even. Today we're going to be working with IOD's Noel Paint Inlay. There is eight pages of gorgeous festive designs for you to pick from. We are actually going to use the tall Christmas tree and it's actually going to be the second and third use of that design today. I've done quite a few projects with these designs so make sure you check out my other videos in the IOD Christmas playlist. Now that my first coat of satin is dry, I'm coming in with another coat, quite a thick coat for my paint inlay to sit in. We're using the clear coat today because we just want the design to transfer and we're making sure that we're very thick so that the inlay has something to grab onto. I'm then laying my inlay design side down onto my wet clear coat and I'm going to press down firmly to make sure that it's making good contact. Now this is the second use and I'm using it on fabric so it's not going to be a perfect design. We are not going for perfect here. I'm also using a brayer to apply some pressure. I'm then going to come in with a mister and plain water and I'm going to thoroughly dampen my design. The water is going to help the paint release into the clear coat. I'll then leave my inlay to dry completely. When my inlay is dry, I'm going to mist it well with water. This is going to help the paint inlay to release. I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds after I spray it before I come in and start dabbing off any excess and before I start trying to remove it. I'm being very gentle as I start to pull it away and initially I was a little bit disappointed. It doesn't come out perfect, but it is a good start and I can see that there is still some paint on the inlay. So once we've taken this off and we have given it time to dry, I am going to seal the inlay and then we're actually going to give it another go. So I'm applying the satin clear coat over the top of the dry and sealed initial application and I'm going to give this another go. The main reason we didn't get a perfect image is because this was the second use of the inlay already. So there wasn't as much paint on there to begin with. So we are going to give it another go. I've got a nice thick coat of clear coat there and I'm going to carefully place the tree down. I'm trying to match it up with how I had it before uh, to the best of my ability. to dampen the inlay and make sure that there is enough water there to help the paint release. I'm also applying a little bit more pressure using a damp cloth. I'll then let my inlay dry completely. When the inlay is dry, I will mist it well with water again and use a cloth to help get off any excess. I'll then 
gently peel it back and I could already tell that there was definitely more paint this time around. It still wasn't a perfect image, but I decided that I was going to use a artist brush with some water and I was going to reactivate the paint and help blend the design together. So I am just misting the design and it's really allowing me to almost do a bit of a watercolor situation here. This is a very subtle look. It's a little bit tricky to see on camera, but I was able to blend it quite a bit. And I found that in doing this, I did have a couple of tones of green, which again, it really, it was a lovely effect. When the design is dry, I'll use a 50-50 mix of clear coat and water to seal the design. I just wanted to show you guys this here. This is the first use of the Indigo Floral Paint Inlay using the same technique today and you can see you can get a near perfect transfer. Sadly, however, I did find that there was next to no paint left for a second use, so keep this in mind. Back to our current project, I'm going to use the letterpress stamp to spell out the lovely Carol O Christmas tree and we are using the smaller font from that. I'm positioning the letters and then attaching it to the plastic and then I'm using Dixie Belle's Umber Silk Mineral Paint. It's a lovely brown. I'm using a brayer to apply it to the letters and pressing it down. This is not going to be a perfect stamping here. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to look vintage to match the tree. So we're just going to repeat the process each time until we have all the letters that we need. So this cushion is just going to sit on a chair and look pretty, but if you would like to be able to wash your cushion cover, it is suggested that you heat set the fabric by using an iron or putting it in the dryer on a low heat setting. Once my paint was dry, I'm going to actually cut the handles in half. And these are going to be our little cushion ties. I accidentally got the tie there in the paint a little bit. That was almost a bit of a disaster. But anyway, I'm cutting the second one as well. And these are going to help hold our cushion in. So here I have a cushion um, that I bought and I did have to take some of the stuffing out so it could fit. This is a smaller cushion, but I am working it into the covers and making sure that I have it filled. Once I have the insert in, I'm going to tie each of the little handles in a bow. If you don't like this look, you could always attach a zipper to the other end or use hot glue to seal it together. I just wanted a no sew option and this feels very farmhouse, so I'm very happy with how it looks. And here is our finished cushion. I hope that you guys like this project. I hope that it's inspired you to think about using your inlays in another way. You could definitely try this to just maybe create some custom tote bags instead. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Please hit that like button if you like it. If you're not already, I'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our projects. You can find all these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.